Hey there. If you've ever worked with software that keeps things secure and organized, you've probably come across access control systems, and you may have heard terms such as RBAC, ABAC, and RBAC. This video attempts to explain these access control systems in very simple terms and also talk about examples of each along with pros and cons and what makes each of these unique. Let's dive straight in. So first up, we've got role-based access control or RBAC. Now, this is the classic go-to approach and RBAC, as the name suggests, is all about roles. Think of it like this. Your organization has specific job roles like engineer, product manager or sales. And there are different access permissions assigned to each of these roles. So when a user logs in, they get access based on their role. So here's an example. Let's say Kim here is a manager at a company. Now, as a manager, she can view reports and budgets and approve them, but she cannot edit user accounts. So when Kim logs in, the system checks her role as a manager and grants her those permissions. Simple. Same way, you have Raj here, who is a DevOps person, and he has access to the production server. Now, Raj does not have access to budgets because he's not tagged to a role that does so. The advantage of RBAC is it's easy to understand and manage, especially in small organizations where roles don't change much. It's also very efficient. You're assigning permissions once to a role and any new user in that role gets the same access. But it's not perfect. RBAC can get a little rigid as organizations grow. If someone doesn't fit into a single role, say they're working across departments, you might have to create custom roles or add exceptions, which at scale can become increasingly messy. Next, we've got attribute-based access control or ABAC, where access rights are granted to users through the use of policies that combine attributes together. So instead of relying just on roles, ABAC considers attributes, things like who you are, where you're accessing from, the time of day, and even what you're trying to access. So for example, imagine Luca is an analyst trying to access sensitive financial data right here. And the system basically checks, is he an analyst? Is he accessing this from office? Is it a time of day that he's allowed to access this file? And these different attributes are essentially used to make a decision. And if these conditions are not met, then he does not get access. But if they are, well, then he does get access. Now, ABAC is super flexible because you can create very specific policies that adapt to your needs. This is great for complex environments where the old one-size-fits-all approach, like a role-based system, doesn't really cut it. Having said that, with great power comes great responsibility. So ABAC policies can get a little complicated really fast, especially at scale. Managing all these different attributes might require very advanced tools and expertise and can also be resource intensive. Finally, let's talk about the new kid on the block, relationship-based access control or RBAC. Relationship-based access control grew out of the relationship graphs in social networks. And in RBAC, access decisions are made based on the relationships between entities. So say you have users, you have resources, you have environments, you have to determine the relationships between these different entities rather than relying solely on roles and attributes. Reback is how Google does planet scale authorization across their services such as YouTube, Docs, and even Cloud IAM. So here's an example. Say Mira is the owner of a document and all owners have permissions to also read but also edit a document. So if there is a permission check saying, hey, can Mira read this document? This looks at a directed graph between the document and Mira to see if there is a relationship there. As you can see, there is a relationship between document and reader, reader and owner, and Mira is an owner, and hence Mira can read this document. Similarly, Alice, for instance, is a reader of this document, but not an owner. Now, Reback shines in collaboration-heavy complex environments where 
relationships between users and resources are constantly changing. It's also great for modern graph-based systems. And Reback also gives you the flexibility to model an to model a RBAC or ABAC system. So think of Reback as a superset that also includes RBAC and ABAC. Now, with traditional Reback, it's hard to do it with data that's only available at the request time because you need to have the relationships beforehand. So, for example, if your permission decision needs to take into account the IP address of the calling user, then you don't have the IP address beforehand to store as a relationship ahead of time. So you can't easily use that in a graph walk or a graph traversal like I just showed. So that was a quick introduction to RBAC, ABAC and RBAC and hopefully you have a clear idea of the differences of each of these different access control systems. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you're using for your applications as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you.